right? So feeling good is very important. Also think about this, right? Also think about this. Think about this. You open your bank account right now. You open your bank account right now. Um, averagely mm, in your dollar account, because you will have a dollar account if you don't already have one, you know, you have, say, like $100,000 sitting in there in your USD account. And if you're in Nigeria, your Naira account, you just open it. Mm, you have some roughly, like you have roughly 20 million in there in cash. How does that, how does that sound? Uh, see, these are the things that I think, like you have no idea how the kind of crazy thoughts that come into my head. And I'm like, I'm just thinking about it. But like, if you start to have these conversations with yourself, I promise you, you will always feel good. You will always, always feel good. And then at that point, all you want to do is like, you know what? Let me just go and work to get this money. That's how, that's what it gets you. Like most times when I think about this is I'm like, man, let me just work. Let me, let me just, let me just, you know, let me just, let me just get to work. Let me make this money, right? Like, what do I need to do? Let me get on the phone. Let me call it. That's when I remember that, oh, yo, I have this prospect I'm supposed to call. I have these numbers I'm supposed to call, you know, these are the things that drive me. And if you're not thinking about your future, you're not driven right? What drives you is the good life that you want. It's not really the poverty. Mm -mm. It's not the current situation. You can get frustrated about your current situation, but that's not what's going to drive you really, right? Because if you're working based on frustration, you are actually going to be working like, I want to get out of this now. But when you're working like you want the future, right? You just, you're working with more happiness. If you guys get what I mean, right? Top of seven, if you, if you, if that's, if you, if you understand, or if you can relate to what I'm talking about, when you're working towards a beautiful future, you're working towards, you know, driving a nice car, you're working towards driving and you live in the nice house. You're working towards, you know, um, um, you know, having a lot of money. You're working towards traveling around the world. You know, you work with that, ah, I cannot, you, you work with that excitement. I cannot wait to get there. Like you're working, you're happy because you know that as you're working, you will get the result. So you're not working in frustration because, oh, I need to pay this money. Oh, I need to get out of the, of, of the debt. No, I need to do this. You're not working based on frustration because when you work based on frustration, you don't get results. You don't get results. That's a fact. You don't get results, right? So what I rather feel, I would rather want to work, feel good about what I'm doing. How do I feel good? Because it's not easy to feel good, especially when the wrong things are going on around you or the opposite of what you want is going on around you. So how can I consciously feel good about doing what I'm doing right now? I have to constantly think about the future. So if you remember your self-confidence formula, what did he say to you? I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of what? Thinking of the person I intend to become. Can you guys see how it aligns now? Can you see how it aligns now? Right? Because I'm consciously thinking about who, who I want to become. It might, these things probably don't make sense to you when you're reading them, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to look, going P150 is not a problem. Prospect is not a problem. I want you guys to, when I said, are you, are you going to work with me? I want your mindset to be right. I want you to think like Coach Sylvia. I want you to, align you the way that your thoughts process like you know you're thinking like me because if you're able to think like me you will get my result you will do the work i know you do the work but your 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 thinking your thoughts could mess up the work so i want you to think right i want you to always have the right things in your head going on irrespective of what's going on around you and you are not going to adopt this overnight don't think you're going to nope it took me three years to develop to the person I am right now. And the person I'm going to be in the next five years is going to take me another five years to develop into that person. So it's not going to be, it's not an overnight thing, right? So if you, if you, if you, if you want to be, if you want to be, if you want to be a coach Sylvia, or you want to think like me, or you want to have my mentality, or you want to have a mentality of David, all the people you admire, it's going to take time. So don't beat yourself up like, oh, you know, when will I get, no, no, no. You're going to have to develop it. But if you're not developing it from now, how are you going to get there? If you guys understand me, 
You're not going to get there. You're not going to get to the point where you're a very positive person. So you have to start developing through your words, through your thoughts. I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily, right? Auto-suggestion. I'm going to consciously speak the right thing. Is repeat the things that I want to see. So what, what kind of conversations are you even having with your coach? Do you go to your coach to complain? Listen, this is how you need to see complaints. You need to see complaints as putting yourself in negative mode, not because you're trying to get solutions. Complaining doesn't get you solutions. Can anybody relate? It doesn't get you solution. When you complain, you don't get solution. The, prob the thing is, when you are complaining, you're in a negative state, right? You're in a negative attitude. You don't feel good because something is not, you don't like what is happening. So you're complaining with a negative attitude. You're feeling bad. So the first, the first, um, All right, can you guys hear me? Sorry, the internet went off. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Sorry, the internet, the internet uh, tripped off. So when you're complaining, right, the first solution is not to fix the problem, right? The first solution is to get you out of the, the, the emotional state that you're in. So for example, let me give you guys an example. I want you, I want, I like to be practical. I told you it's a conversation, right? Now you come to me and you say, oh, Coach Sylvia, my app is not working. You know, my swipe call is not open. I don't know what's happening. It's not opening. I'm missing trades. Immediately, what is, what is Kochovia thinking about? Why, why are you shouting? Or why are you, you know, calm down? So my first problem is I need to get you right. Because at that point, if I tell you, oh, swipe coin is working, you are not listening. Why? Because of how you feel, because of the state that you're in, because of the emotions that you're in. You're not thinking about the solution. I need to get you out of that. So instead of go to someone, to your mentor, for example, your coach in the complaining attitude, right? I can go as, oh, Coach Sylvia, um, you know, my swipe coin is not working. I don't know if there's a way I could fix it. Can you help me? Guess what? If I tell you, okay, bring your phone. Let's check the swipe coin up and let's see what the issue is. So immediately I'm thinking about the solution. I'm not thinking about your attitude. Do you guys understand the illustration I just gave you, right? So at every point in time, I want to understand the conversations I'm having. Does it make me feel good? Okay, sorry about that. I just had to switch my internet. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay. All right. Sorry. I think uh, I had to switch my network. Okay, cool. So I need to be careful with the conversations I'm having. I need to be careful about how I feel. It's very, very, it will affect everything around me, right? It would affect everything around me. So that's on the side, right? So whenever I ask you guys, how do you feel? Whenever someone asks you, how do you feel? Tell them I feel amazing. When you say I feel amazing, how do, how do you really feel when you say it? Tell me, how do you really feel when if someone says, how are you? And like, I'm amazing. How do you really feel when you say, would you, would you tell someone I'm amazing? No, the moment you're saying I'm amazing, right? I'm, there's that automatic, you know, from nowhere smiles that just comes, right? So I have actually cultivated it. I, I learned that like last year, was it last year? I think two years ago. It's either I say I'm amazing or I'm blessed. So there's no way I'm going to, someone's going to say, Siva, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm blessed. No, you will be like, I'm blessed. Or you'll be like, I'm blessed. Like there's the attitude that comes with saying such words. But let me show you the difference. How are you doing, Sylvia? I'm fine. I'm fine. You could fake a smile to say you're fine. But you see extra exciting words you cannot fake it. You cannot fake it. Am I right or right? You cannot fake it. So I cannot fake saying I'm amazing. No, I the, even saying it, the amazement or whatever it's called, it will come from inside, right? It will definitely come from. So 
cultivate that habit. Start from the little small words. I'm amazing. I'm blessed. Right? I'm great. Yes, another good one. I'm great. All right? So every morning when I wake up, that's what I'll do to you guys. I'll just text you on the group. How are you guys doing? I want to hear words like I'm great. I'm amazing. I'm fired up. You know, just exciting words. They make you feel good. Another thing I wanted to talk about, which is very, very personal, right, is your why. Listen, you guys have heard this stuff a lot of times, but you might not understand how important this is, but write this down. Your why, right, listen, your why is going to get you to $10,000 a month. I don't know about you, but for me, my why drove me to $10,000. You know why? $1,000 was not enough. I don't know if it's enough for you or... But when you get there, you probably realize you have bigger problems. 1,000 was not enough. 2,000 was not enough. 5,000 was not enough, right? I was saving because I, I hit this ranks during COVID. But when I got to 10,000, I kind of felt like I, I now had money to be able to solve the problems the way that I wanted to solve them, right? So for me, 10,000, your why will take you to 10,000. When you get to 10,000, you might feel a bit relaxed, right? You might feel a bit, mm, okay, I'm able to buy this. I'm able to drop money without thinking about it twice, you know, as opposed to maybe when you're making 1K, you're a bit conservative, right? You're a bit, you know, so today you have money, tomorrow you don't really have money. You know, you're a bit, mm, you're not so strong at giving, but 10K, you could drop 3 million down and you don't feel like, you know, you're broke, if you get what I mean. So your why is going to get you to making 10K every single month. But your goal is what's going to drive you from $10,000 every single month because $10,000 in Nigeria is 6 millionaire right now. Any of you on this call, everybody on this call, I promise you, 6 million a month coming into your account, you're good. Anybody. There's nobody, you know, working a job, an average job that makes 6 million a month. Show me the company right? So $10,000, which is 6 million naira, right? For you is a big deal. It's actually a lot of money. So at that point, you could buy the, the, the phone that you want. You could live in the kind of house you want. You could eat the kind of food you want. It's actually very okay, right? But when it comes to, oh, I want to buy a house, it's not going to be 10K any, anymore, right? When it comes to, oh, I want to buy a car, it's not going to be 10K anymore, right? So when it comes to, oh, I want to invest into, I want to buy land, it's not going to be 10K anymore. So you understand what I'm talking about right now. It's not going to be 10K anymore. At that point, you're now thinking, oh, I want to just make 25K. When I make $25,000, $50,000, it's going to be good for me, right? So now that's what you're thinking about. You now want to run more because what? You've seen what to use money for. On your way to 10K, you are still seeing small, small things, small, small things, rents, all those small, small things. They're still small. So you really want 10K to sort those problems out. But when you take those problems out of the way, what starts to drive you? Your goal. Ah, this year I want to buy land. This year I want to travel to Dubai. This year, you think you're going to use the six, if you use six million to solve your problems, do you want to put a trip inside? No. You wouldn't be thinking about, even if you're thinking about it on a smaller scale, but you want to go to Dubai. Let's say you want to go to Dubai. You want to, you know, go there on a big scale. You want to be able to shop. You're not now looking at that six million right now. You're now thinking, oh, if I could make more. So that's where, that's what starts to drive you. The things that you're now exposed to that you could use money for. You go on Instagram, you start to see investment. You start to see you know, uh, 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 houses, you start to see lands. I, I could invest in this. You, you know, but you don't have the money. Right now, you probably look at these pages and you're just swiping through them. like a big, a big, Because you don't have the money. You don't, you understand what I'm saying? So you, you, the money is not there for you to think about thinking about it. But when, you, when you're close to getting that kind of money, you'll be able to look at how much would this really cost me? Okay, okay, this is the amount. Okay, let me start working towards it. So what is now driving you towards $25,000 a month $50,000 a month, $100,000 a month is what? Your goals. Well, now let's talk about the why. What is this why? Let me share mine with you. Now, the why for me, right, when I joined the business was, I want I, I told Katrina, because Katrina asked me, you know, what is one thing you really want to do? I said, I really would love to buy a house for my mom. 
And she said, mm, that's a very good one. I said, yeah. She said, you know, why, why do you, why do you, why, why is that, why is that one thing you really want to do? I said, because that's one thing my late brother would have done. Right now saying that alone for me was, I felt emotional about it. I remember I said, you know, my mom used to say things like, oh, you know, she had, a, she had my dad, my dad has land and, you know, we land a very a land. My sister, my mom has, you know, but you know, it's, those days it's easy to buy land, but to build is the problem. So my mom used to say things like, oh, my brother Akuma Bidi wants to build this. My dad would say the same thing. Oh, you know, when he graduates, because of course he was in the military, when he graduates, when, you know, when he, because he went to NDA, you know, when he, he, when he's, when he's settled, when he gets married, he'll build this place. So it was a constant conversation. It was never a Sylvia will build it. It was never a Stefania will build it. Nope, those conversations never came. It was a he will do it. So I knew that when my, when my, my brother died, those were the things that my parents would feel like they could never happen again. Right? Those were the thing. Those are the things that my parents would have felt like, who will now do this thing? And I remember the day after my brother died, of course, it was so much crying and all that. And one thing my mom was, one thing I said to my mom, which I never forget was, I said, don't worry, we'll pay the rent. Because we just moved into a new house and the rent was like times two or times three of whatever we're paying, where we're coming from, right? And of course, the mentality was, ah, my brother moved us here, he'll pay. So that's how we felt. So when my brother died, he was like, it's like you've collected a problem that's bigger than you. I was still a copper. As a copper, I was earning how much then? 30 something K. And then I was working with a, a, a big four. I was earning 80,000 a month. So combined, let's say in a month, I was getting like 120K. But transport and everything, was I really earning 120K? It didn't even feel like that. But I was never involved in paying for key things in the house, like rent, right? I was never involved. So that for me was like, I needed to grow up fast. And I said, mommy, don't worry. You know, if it's the house rent, I'll pay. We'll pay. Me and my sister will pay. So I, the rent, when, the, when I knew the rent was going to come, how do you think, do you think I was about to disappoint my mom? For what I told her during the period she was grieving that I would do it. No. No. And of course, I didn't want to disappoint my brother. I didn't want a situation where he is sad wherever he is because we cannot do the things he would have done. These are the things that were driving me. Right? And that's why I cannot care if someone says they're not joining me. Because those people are not about to pay my bill. They're not about to pay for my rent. They're not about to help me do the things I need to do. Because they say no to me, I'm going to stop. No, this is how you want to think about it. So when those no's are affecting you, it's because you don't have what is really driving you. You don't have where it is really pinching you. It's not about the $50. You're looking at what that, look, This I need to make this money. Right. If you remember David Imonichi, he said, you know, his why, right? His why at the point was his his daughter, um, when he started network marketing, obviously, you know, he needed to pay for child support or something like that, or buy uh diapers. And I think it was like I think the child support was like $50 a month or something like that. I don't remember, I don't really remember, but I think it was like $50. Now imagine the David Imonichi of today didn't have $50 at that time. Do you think that? He cared about the people saying no to him, the people saying, I don't want to do it. What was he thinking about? I've got $50 to pay child support. I've got $50 to pay child support. He's, he was thinking about that. So what are you waking up to every morning that makes you feel emotional, that makes you feel, I've got to do this? Have you seen your mom walk so hard and you feel like, man, I need to get this woman. Like, it has to make you feel uncomfortable. The why is not, I want to be financially free. No, that's not a why. A why is, why do I really need this to work for me? I usually ask some people this question, this question rather. If, if you, if someone very dear to you, as a matter of fact, put, it, put, put the person who's very dear to you in the chat. The one person right now that is after your heart, like you would hurt if anything happened to them right now, 
put the put the one person in the chat your mom most people is the mom your mom okay your brother okay amazing <clears throat> who else who else who else talk to me your siblings one person give me one person okay okay fine well, your siblings fine your mom your mom okay all right your mom your dad okay your mom your dad okay cool now if your mom or your dad or your siblings okay everybody all of you that answer the question here your lovely mom okay cool if she needs fifty thousand dollars right now and it's a case of life or death right life or death if she needs fifty thousand right now do you have it fifty thousand dollars not in error god forbid though nothing happens to any god forbid but this is how you want to program your mind, right? If she needs or he needs $50,000 right now, and it's a, it's a matter of life or death, right? Do you have it? No. No. Right? So do you want it to get to the point where you don't have it? See, you're not working because of the problems now. You're working because of the problems that might arise in the future. The, the, light, the, the, the future is not always going to be great. There could be problems that will come your way. And the last thing that you want to be a problem for you is money. Something happened when, okay, yeah, a family friend of mine, of ours rather, you know, they're very wealthy. And this person is not doesn't feel she's not she's not been feeling too well you know so my mom just told us randomly i think it was two days ago she was like oh she's in the uk right now and they're about to have uh you know to undergo a surgery and all that you know um they said that you know the surgery you know is usually very painful and it might take her like a while to recover she might be on wheelchair and all that but the, the key thing is the solution right Do you know what my sister said which really struck me she said I'm just happy that money is not their problem. Because this issue that this person has is very painful. Because I saw her like two months ago and I knew she was in so much pain. Like, I was like, this really hurts. Like, this person is in so much pain. Now, imagine this person didn't have the money to solve this pain. And, and they are, they are, they go through this pain for the rest of their lives. If it was your family member, how would you feel? It was, if it was your family member, how would you feel? The one person you dropped for me here, right, that you love the most, you would, you would be sad if anything happened to them. How would you feel if you saw them that way? And my sister was like, thank God money is not this, this person's problem. There's a solution and they have the money. This person doesn't have to go through the pain anymore. Someone asked me one time, I think when I went P2000 and my sister went P2000, someone asked me, right? He said, I don't know why you and your sister work so hard. Like, she said, he said, I don't know why girls, like, keep people working so hard. Like, you know, he said it in pigeon, of course. Let me say, like, I don't know why when they do, when they work like men. That's what he said to me then. You know, he congratulated me. I was like, I don't know why you and your sister, you know, they work like men. And I just like, he was like, tell me why you people work so hard. Like, what do you need this money for? This much money for? And I just smiled because I know the rent to pay, right? My mom used to drive at least two hours coming back from work, right? Drive. And the older they get, the, the weaker their bones get. You know that, right? So imagine she had to drive every day, Monday to Friday, two hours. 
right? Two hours just to get home. Traffic, sometimes it's three hours. She will come home and be like, I've been in traffic for three hours. My legs, most times it's like, Sylvia, come on, massage my leg. And these things, when you see them, it's like, how hard can this life really be? And how much is the salary at the end of the day? But guys, when we moved here, right, to where I live right now, every single day, I promise you, every single day, my mom will come upstairs and pray for me and my sister. God will bless you. You know why? It takes her 20 minutes to get home every day from work. 20 minutes. Can you compare 20 minutes to three hours driving in traffic? Every day, like... At some point, it was a, mommy, must you come upstairs? Because my room is upstairs. She would just come and say, God will bless you people. Ah, this stress you people relieved me of. God will bless you. God will bless you. She would just come sometime and be like, ha, today, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. There was no traffic everywhere. I'm home. God will bless you people. Let me tell you something. My mom started adding weight. You know why? Peace. Because you can't be driving that in three hours every day. In traffic, three hours every day. In traffic. We've never talked about going to work. Or we're still just talking about coming back. Every day. For how many years? And you think you will look chubby and fit and good? No, you cannot. That's stress. So sometimes you'll come and be like, people just say, people should be like, hmm. people in my office are just telling me that these days I'm adding weight, I'm looking fresher. She said, she'll just be like, of course. Ah. Do you know the stress of taking off me? Why? Because we worked to make sure that that was not a problem. My mom likes working, so we can't tell her don't don't work. She retires, I think, this year or next year anyway. So she'd be like, there's no way I'm going to stop working. I want to be able to retire. I, I'm waiting for my retirement day. I want to be able to celebrate with my colleagues for going through 35 years of service. It's a good thing for them. Doesn't mean she's working for the money right now. She's working because of what? She just likes to do it. Not for the money, for sure. So who is that person that you want to put a smile on their face, that they're very dear to your heart? It could be your dad. I don't know the sacrifices your dad made for you to get to where you are right now. All right. When we got my dad a house in, um, what, what month was it? Was it March? February, March? It was while I was in Calabar, went for Elevate Calabar. You know, I told him about the house. It was a surprise. He didn't know. This has always been my dad's dream for years. Like for like the longest I'd known my dad. It's always been his dream. And, you know, men don't express so much joy, but I knew you could, you know that that happiness is from inside. Doing my dad's birthday, my dad has never had a, a party before for any reason. It's always my mom who is probably either doing her birthday, house party, or something. My dad, never really. You know how he felt on his 60th? Having to be celebrated like that, having to have that kind of, even if it was a little party, but it was a bit of luxury. And a day after he came upstairs to my room, same thing, God will bless you people. God, listen, these little prayers, they go a long way into your future. Making your parents happy while they are alive and strong, giving them the life that they desire. One of my sister's goals is written, written on the wall right here. I'm so happy and grateful. I sponsor my parents to Dubai. I sponsor my parents to this country. It's on the wall right here. I'm with my laptop, but I've you know, stood up to show you guys. It's on the wall. So your why is very, very strong. It's, it's something that just makes you feel, you know, feel different. And you don't take no for an answer from anybody. You keep going. You keep doing what you need to do because you need to, you, you need to get this out of the way. And you need to see that you could do whatever you say you could do. That's how I am. If I say I want to do something, I've got to do it. Why? Because I need to prove to me that anything I say I will do, I do it. It's not, it doesn't end in I am. It doesn't end here. 
you make a lot of money. There are a lot of things you want to do. Are you the person who says, I'm going to do this and I get it done? Are you the person who says, I'm going to get to the top of this place? I will get to the top. Are you the person who comes and says, I'm going to go chairman and really do go chairman? Not because, oh, but because to prove to yourself that whatever you say you can do or you will do, you get it done. Irrespective, no excuses, no fufu, no, no trying to be, you know, no be making out, just straight doing the work, getting it done and being the person who says they will do what they want to do and they get it done. You want to go five figures straight in? Same thing. I'm going to learn this skill. I'm going to get so good. I'm going to make five figures, six figures from trading. I've had four figure days trading. Like back to back. I have, I've gone weeks without losing trades. Not because the market was so good, but it was a, I want to be able to go like a week without losing a trade. I've had weeks like that, two weeks. You know, I used to show it then, then in like the old groups, I stopped sharing results because of certain reasons, obviously. But then it used to be two weeks, no losses at all. I have grown small accounts. Take it from as little as 20. Some of you, I shared this, $19 to what, 500 Not for any reason, just to prove to me. What can you prove to you that you can do? I'm sharing my little secrets with, with you guys right? What can you prove to you that you say you will do and you get it done? That's what separates you from every other person. You're a very determined person. You're someone who gets the job done. You're someone who is consistent. You say you will do what you want to do. You get it done. It's just who you are. And this is going to speak for you every area of your life. Everybody takes you for your word because you've done it before. So guys, you're going to go P150 because you're proving to yourself that you will get it done. Irrespective of whatever has to happen, you will get it done. That same attitude is what you are going to maintain to what to chairman. That same attitude is what you're going to maintain to five figures, six figures, because you've developed the attitude of getting it done. If you're still following me, drop some seven, seven, sevens in the chat. Right? The skill is easy. You know to call. You know to prospect. If you make a mistake, you could ask questions. You could get corrected for these, these things. You could learn to, you know, to, 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 to present. You do it over and over and over again. You're a professional. But you could be a professional presenter with a messed up mindset, with the lack of determination you're never going to get results you could be good on the charts but your mindset is messed up you never get results so everybody thinks you're so good at trading but you're not getting results why because you, you, your mindset is not right right your mindset is not right i want you guys to not just be leaders who are just p1000s p150s p2000s p Five thousand chairman. I want you to be a solid leader. Mindset solid. The person who never shakes. The person who gets it done. Very solid person. That is a leader I want you to be. Doesn't matter how young you are in the business, right? Start developing yourself from now. Start developing yourself from what? From now. Right? So that when I'm promoting you guys on the groups, I don't know who drops the flyer, but every, everybody's win is our win. I want to know this person. I, 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 I could trust this person. Irrespective, I could trust this person. Oh, this one, MP150, solid person. Right? So have you made up your mind that you will go P150 in the next seven days, though? Have you made up your mind? Because you have to make up your mind irrespective i don't care who needs to join who needs to say no who needs to say yes who needs to do whatever this is what i'm this is what i'm gonna i'm gonna get this done all right so with that being said i didn't want it to be really long because it's recorded so people could um re-watch it but guys i'm excited for you i told you this was going to be a conversation not about the skill 
but just to get your mind right, right? To making sure that you get this, get results in this, in this space, okay? So if you've gotten value so far, just go ahead and drop value, value, value in the chat. Let's go back and, um, you know, finish up, what, up whatever videos that you need to finish up, of course, and um, get ready. I think towards the evening, maybe Coach Ada, I don't know who's going to be available. Excuse me. We'll train on making those phone calls, all right? So you guys can get on the, on the, on, on, on the phone. Um, tomorrow, we'll probably do lunch because... We want some of you. Some of you are even close to P600. Some of you already have placements. You're close to P600, right? So um, go and ask your coach after this call, you know, how close you are to P600, if at all you are close. But, you know, we need to get P150 out of the way first, all right? So thank you guys for jumping on. Have a great evening. Make a video. In fact, go on the IBO group. Go and let them know that they are missing out. Those people that are not selected to go P150 in seven days. And also go on the P150 uh, um, group and let them know what they missed out. I hope you guys took notes. Remember, you wouldn't be able to retain every information in your head. So it's always important. I hope you have your journal. Every call we do, make sure that you're storing it up in your, in your journal. All right. So thank you guys and have a great evening.